Oh boy, you're here. Thank you very much. I hope that what I'm going to be talking about today is exactly what you were looking for when it came to TDS meters. What do they do? What are they good for? Why are we fussed about them and how to take care of them? Plus a little bit of comparisons just so you see what it actually does. So welcome. Thank you for being here. TDS, Total Dissolved Solids, Mary Tona. I want to say thank you for your patience. You've been asking for a video like this for a while. You also wanted something about the pH and I'm going to break that down into a separate video just because the two are related, but it is better to talk about them separately because one can be overwhelming, the other one can be overwhelming. Combine the two and then poof, brain explosion can happen and some of the information is going to get lost. So today, Mary Tona, I'm going to address everything about a TDS meter, which is an abbreviation for total dissolved solid. So according to World Health Organization, TDS is the term used to describe the inorganic salts and small amounts of organic matter present in solution in water. The principal components are usually calcium, magnesium, sodium and potassium cations and carbonate, hydrogen carbonate, chloride, sulfate, and nitrate anions. So that is according to the World Health Organization because, well, water is water, whether we use it for us as consumption or for our orchids and plants. So TDS, if you want to look at it and from a visual perspective, you know the spots you see on a glass after you wash it and let it air dry? Those spots, that's TDS in a visual sense. That residue has mass and it is actually possible to weigh it. But if you are not in a lab, it's a tricky thing to do. Therefore, we can estimate TDS levels based on conductivity of the water. Since the hydrogen and oxygen molecules of the water carry almost no electrical charge, the electrical conductivity of most other metals in the water minerals and salts, etc., will carry a charge. A TDS meter measures that electrical conductivity level and then converts it to a TDS measurement, which we then refer to as PPM, the abbreviation for parts per million. If you are interested in a separate video about the difference between the electrical conductivity measure and parts per million measure, let me know and I'm almost certain that I can give a brief explanation in a separate video. Almost and brief being the key words. Back to consumption. For us humans, the presence of dissolved solids may affect the taste of the water. Water with extremely low concentrations of TDS may taste flat and insipid. But this is not about what we humans prefer if we were to drink water straight from the faucet. If we were to go by that, then any TDS reading of 200 to 300 milligrams per liter is considered excellent quality, ranging all the way up to 1,200 plus milligrams per liter, which would be considered unacceptable. And to note, TDS in water supplies originate from natural sources, sewage, urban and agricultural runoff and industrial wastewater. Salts also used for road de-icing can also contribute to the TDS loading of water supplies. So why is this so important to note? What has all this got to do with our orchids? Now, it is not my intention whatsoever to sound condescending, but every faucet runs with different water quality, and that is the key to what all this has to do with our orchids. Water quality is paramount for cultivating orchids, no matter the setup, no matter the environment, whether you're growing indoor with a controlled climate or growing outdoors al fresco, water quality is the common denominator every orchid grower has be it in a private collection or the commercial nurseries. You can be a veteran orchid expert, but if something goes wrong with your water supply and doesn't get noticed or fixed quickly, all the years of experience and knowledge mean nothing and orchids will suffer. So know that your water is a personal thing. Your water that you are dealing with is your measurement. It is your baseline for everything that I'm talking about today. 
We can also discuss how water temperature will affect the TDS reading. So, seeing as most orchids prefer to be watered with tepid water or room temperature water, take your circumstances into consideration because they will remain consistent for your purposes, your climate, and all your readings as a baseline. All right, all that out of the way, which I hope was clear and made sense so far, let's get some visuals. And thank goodness, TDS meters react relatively quickly. So I have here my regular tap water straight out of the faucet. This is my RO water straight out of the RO deposit. Here I have my Lekka storage water, which I took out of the storage container just to give you an example when it comes to leaching out any kind of media. And it makes for a great differential reading when we see the baseline of what goes in to our orchids. Here I have plain RO water to rinse my TDS meter with. And then first of all, we switch it on. Keep in mind that most of your TDS meters already come calibrated. There's nothing you need to do. And you can see that it is at zero and the temperature reads six degrees because of where I had it stored in the shade. We'll get to that afterwards. All right, let's dip it into my tap water and see how it reacts. This is my plain tap water, straight out of the faucet. This is what I get out of it, 325 parts per million. But here, you can see that my RO water reads at 10. That's awesome. 10 parts per million coming from tap water that was at 327. This is brilliant for me. I need these low levels. Other TDS meters will go down to two, one, and even back to zero, depending on what the water quality is that goes into a reverse osmosis system and how much it can actually handle and filter out. Let's go into the dirty LECA water, let's say the storage LECA water. And you can see that my LECA is leaching salts and it's at 453 parts per million. Okay, every time I move it, it adjusts, but you get the rough idea. It can go up to 461, goodness me. Anyway, but you get the rough idea how quickly the TDS meter can measure how many dissolved solids and impurities are in the water, even though it will not show you what the different components are. The reason a TDS meter is super important is if you were to go by not knowing anything about your water that comes out of the faucet, and then you would water your orchids with that, you don't know how much dissolved solids, minerals, and salts are already in your water, and then you water your orchids. And then you're going to be adding some fertilizer into the water that you don't know your TDS is at. So let's start this again. Here I have plain faucet water, same one as prior, so I don't need to measure that. Here I have my plain reverse osmosis water. So I'm gonna take the measurement that I've already done from that. And because it is relatively easy, I'm gonna be adding some CalMag to my tap water and my RO water. And I'm gonna be adding exactly the same amount. Excuse the frazzled pipette, that is Siliano thinking this was a great thing to chew on. Right, so I'm gonna take some calcium and magnesium and make sure that I'm measuring the same amount for both just so that we see what goes on. So there's one measure in my plain tap water. And here is another measure, which is exactly the same, even though it doesn't go all the way up to the line, because previously I had a big bubble at the base. So this is exactly the same. There is no bubble in there. Into my RO water. We're gonna give that a stir. And we're gonna give this one a stir. I am not affiliated with the product I just showed you. This is an example, it'll work for your fertilizer, it'll work for any kind of supplement that you put into your orchids, the seaweed, the CalMag, anything. If you're not sure, this is gonna work for anything. I'm just using my CalMag because it's liquid, it's quick, I don't have to wait for it to dissolve. Now, we're gonna switch our TDS meter on again, and we're gonna go down to our baseline, which should be zero. However, these margins are so minute that I'm gonna take this one parts per million and put it into my regular tap water. And there you see how my TDS has shot up. 
and keeps going up. And the more I wiggle it, the more it adjusts. But for the purpose of demonstration, I am now at 540 plus parts per million, no matter where it decides to settle. 540. Okay. We're at zero. Let's give it a goo into the RO water. And here I now have a reading of 308, 309 parts per million in my RO water. Okay, so what does all that mean? Well, if we don't have an idea about our parts per million in whatever water we're using, and then we are adding our fertilizer and all that good stuff for our orchids, if I didn't know what my baseline was with my tap water, I would be putting parts per million when I water my orchids. When it comes to my RO water that had a lesser TDS to begin with, and then I added the CalMag or whatever it is that I wanted, same amount, I will be adding 319 parts per million into the pot or the mount as I water my orchids. That is a lot. And that is why PPM is so important to measure. Measuring the baseline, what is in the water, is it good enough for the orchids or are there far too many minerals already in the water? Us adding our fertilizer or supplements on top of that and all of a sudden the parts per million numbers are off the charts. The runoff water that orchids receive out in nature is never in a million years that concentrated the reason we want to make sure that the water that we use for our orchids and the total dissolved solids are minimal or only to what the orchid is consuming is so that we don't have mineral buildup on the top of our media, salt accumulation around our roots because that would cause root burn and it brings all sorts of problems with it. And a TDS meter is one of the easiest things that you can read. And yes, that segues into pH because that would be the next step. But again, that's going to be a separate video because what I'm trying to do is break down each individual component so that when we've nailed the one, the next one is another building block that just slides into place very, very easily without a lot of confusion. And I hope that I have achieved that with this video. Let me tell you, that wrapping my head around this, all the information I was trying to gather, has been one of the biggest challenges because I come from a history of growing orchids on trees and nature took care of the rest. Honestly, it was only when I started growing in pots I saw things happening that I couldn't understand and salt buildup was a big one. You could see from the quality of my tap water and that is why it is a personal thing based on what is coming out of your tap whether it is okay to water with just plain water from your tap and if you have any margin around 100 or below then your fertilizer addition supplements or any kind of addition to that water is perfectly fine because you're not going off the charts with how much ppm you have in your water you can see that on a small little quantity like this i already had 349 in a small quantity of just a supplement. And if I didn't know my parts per million in my tap water and I did the same thing here, my levels are... Now I only have a parts per million ratio for my orchids from 50 parts per million all the way up to 300 parts per million. If I didn't do what I was doing with my tap water and measuring what I'm dealing with, I am putting in more than double into my pots and that would cause big, big problems. So I hope I explained that correctly, but there's one more thing I would like to address. If you're still here, thank you very, very much. <laughs> Let's talk about getting the most of our TDS meter because, you know, on the market, there's cheaper ones, there's more expensive ones. Mine happens to be a waterproof one with a temperature gauge, which I very, very rarely use for sussing out the temperature of my water. Basically, room temperature water, tepid water, if it feels too cold to the touch, then that shouldn't be touching our orchids. That's sort of the rule of thumb there. But let's talk about getting the most out of our TDS meter. So the first one is pretty obvious. Do not drop it. These are highly delicate little readers, even though we are not in a lab. Our little ones that we have at home, they are still pretty sensitive. So don't drop it. And do not completely submerge the unit in water or dip it below the line 
that is marked on your TDS meter, no matter the brand, there will be a maximum line and you should not go beyond that, including if your TDS meter is waterproof. Mine supposedly is waterproof, but waterproof merely means it is not sensitive to water splashing on it beyond the immersion level indicator. It doesn't mean I can dip it all the way down. All you need to do is get the electrodes covered in the water. That is plenty. It doesn't have to go all the way up to the marker. Also, do not store the unit in high temperatures or direct sun. It will shorten the lifespan of your TDS meter. And after repeated usage, it is advised to clean the electrodes to prevent residue buildup. So yeah, you might be sloshing around and cleaning up an RO water or the cleanest water that you've got over an extended period of time, but we're talking minute, minute microscopic particles. So these electrodes can get coated with residue and they can build up over time. On a day-to-day -day basis, you can do what I just did, slosh it around in the cleanest water that you've got, whether it's reverse osmosis or water from your tap, whichever water is the cleanest, and put the cap back on and store it away. And then every once in a while, clean the electrodes, and you can do that by soaking them in vinegar for approximately 10 minutes, and then rinse off again with clean water and store until next time you need it. If your electrodes look really, really bad, they have a tarnished look about them, because sometimes you might be using your TDS meter to measure your parts per million of seaweed, which has always got this sort of nasty brown tinge to it. But if it's really, really bad, and you haven't cleaned your electrodes, at least let's say, let's give a margin, once a month with some vinegar, then it is possible to soak the electrodes in alcohol or bleach. That may help, may, there's no guarantee, but it is not advisable seeing as these are so much more aggressive. A very, very soft little cloth, microfiber cloth or something can also be used to wipe off the electrodes, but touching those electrodes, eh, I would avoid it. So best practice is a little soak, 10 minute soak of just vinegar will clean the electrodes of any kind of residue buildup and you're much safer that way than going to the extent of using alcohol or bleach. And remember that battery levels may affect the readings, so bear in mind how long you have had your TDS meter and make sure that the battery levels are still up to speed because as they deplete, so does the accuracy of the reading. Having stared at my containers of water all this time, I wonder if this was helpful. I wonder if I managed to strip down the subject of TDS PPM to the skeleton of what it is. It is not something that should make anyone feel overwhelmed when they hear people talk about TDS and PPM. And if you still feel overwhelmed after this video, please use the comments below and I would be very, very happy to write things down and try and find a better way to make it as simple as it actually is. Mary Tonna, part one of your request. I hope that this was helpful. Everyone else, thank you so much for your time listening to me talk about something that you may already know everything about. If I've missed anything and you feel it is important to add that, please add that in the comments below for the benefit of everybody else. I appreciate it so much and thank you in advance. Now, all that's left for me to say is have yourselves a beautiful day, please, on one condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.